Hey guys, Josh here. As the English release of Rune Factory 5 is approaching, I would like to share with you some of the tips that I found the most useful during my playthrough. You might be familiar already with some of these if you've played previous entries in this series, but if Rune Factory 5 is your first one, you might feel like the game is a bit overwhelming or confusing at first, and hopefully these tips will make your experience a bit more enjoyable. For this video, I'm not alone, I got some help from a friend who's also been playing the Japanese version of the game and who covers a lot of Rune Factory 5 content on her channel. Her name is Cloudy from Cloudy Skies Gaming and I will let her introduce you to our very first beginner tip. Hello! As you know by now, I am Cloudy, I enjoy cozy farming games with deeper socializing features and I simply love to talk about the cast of characters or the latest updates. Thank you so much for having me and here is our first tip. A good crop to start planting early is the tomato for earning money fast in the beginning. Compared to our classic turnip, which will earn you about 30 gold per piece, one tomato will actually sell for 540 base price. So when we first start off in spring, you will soon notice that tomato seeds are nowhere to be sold at the general store, but they can be obtained very early through requests that you can accept through the headquarters bulletin board. If you accomplish the right task, you will then get your hands on your tomato seeds. First, it's going to take you seven days to accomplish your first harvest but the awesome part about this crop is that it will keep producing new fruit after your first harvest and you can usually obtain three tomatoes per plant at a time don't forget one fruit is already worth 540 gold each the tomato grows best in spring and summer so as soon as you get your hands on tomato seeds you can just plant and grow them all season long however winter is going to offer the worst conditions for nurturing our tomato also keep in mind the crops prices I mentioned are only their base values. There are ways to further increase your crops quality and shipping value. If you want to make more money from your tomatoes or any other crops, one very important thing to do is to get higher level seeds, which in turn will give you higher quality produce. By default, the seeds you will buy at the store will be level 1. However, when you use your sickle on a fully grown crop as opposed to just harvesting it, it will give you a seed that's one level higher. For example, cutting a level 1 tomato will give you a level 2 tomato seed, and then you can plant that seed to get a level 2 tomato. And once you ship that level 2 tomato, the store will start selling level 2 seeds. Sometimes you may get seeds simply from harvesting a crop, but they will be the same level as the crop itself, so make sure to use your sickle to get higher level seeds. Not only higher level crops will sell for more money, they are also needed for quite a few requests, so I would recommend always keeping one of your crops aside to cut with your sickle, plant the new seed right after, and in no time you'll have all of your crops to level 10. Also helpful to maximize your profit that you can make out of your crops is by paying attention to the good and bad harvest system that is rotating and changing randomly every week. To figure out which two crop types are going to be appointed as a good crop or bad crop, we can always ask Olivia for a two-week prediction for the current and the following week. But how exactly does the system influence our harvest? Essentially, it determines the amount of crops that we will be able to harvest in certain weeks. If a crop type is declared as good harvest, the amount of harvestable fruit is going to randomly increase by up to two pieces per plant. However, if a crop is randomly chosen as bad harvest, it could instead decrease by up to two. In any case, we will always be able to at least harvest one fruit per plant. Otherwise, that would be a bit mean, wouldn't it? If that was a little bit difficult to grasp, let me give you an example. In the case of the tomato, the base amount of fruit that can be produced by one plant is already at 3. But if the tomato were to be selected as good crop, then we could technically get 5 harvestable tomatoes per plant at maximum. On the other hand, as a bad crop, if we are really unlucky like I was here, our tomato plant could end up giving us only 2 or even 1 tomato per plant at worst. Naturally, the more crops we can harvest, Harvest, the more value we will be getting out of it. So what we want to do here is frequently ask Olivia which crops have been chosen for each week so that we can always plan ahead and focus on planting and harvesting especially the good crops. If you want to know more about your crops, one essential tool is the magnifying glass which can be bought from the general store. When equipped, this tool tells you about the status of your crops and your soil, which will be very handy if you want to know when it will be ready to harvest, if it's healthy, the yield of your crops, among other information, and we could spend a whole video just talking about the different stats, 
However, you'll soon find out that switching between your different tools and the magnifying glass can be a real pain, making taking care of your crops a lot more tedious than it should be. One great thing about Rune Factory is its crafting system. Once again, this is something we could probably talk about in depth in another video, but all tools and weapons can be upgraded with different materials to add various effects and stats. One thing you can upgrade your tools with is the magnifying glass, so simply use your anvil, which you can buy from Studio Palmo, select weapon upgrade, pick the tool to which you'd like to add the magnifying glass, in my case I like to have it on both my hoe and my watering can, and next time you go in your field with one of these tools equipped, you'll instantly be able to see all of your soil and crops stats, without having to use the magnifying glass separately, and that's gonna save you a lot of time. While you're making sure to plant your seeds on the most fertile ground, you will definitely stumble upon a lot of debris on your field right away, but don't sell all of these pebbles, twigs and weeds. I know desperate times call for desperate measures and sometimes you might really feel tempted to sell everything that you can to earn a living and get money faster, but this is not the way to go about it here. In Rune Factory 5 especially, you will find yourself needing so much lumber and stone for all different kinds of things that really come in handy early on, be it for expanding facilities and for purchasing furniture, for crafting tables that let us forge weapons and armor, or for brewing health potions that are going to be a lifesaver on our early adventures, you will absolutely need a lot of lumber and stone for nearly everything. Even weed will come in handy as you can put it into your automated fertilizer bin. So I'd really advise you to save everything up as much as you can and put all of your resources into your storage shed. One pebble will give you one stone if you hit it with a hammer, and one twig chopped with an axe will be worth one lumber. It might not sound like much at first, but let me tell you it's definitely going to stack up, as pebbles, twigs and weeds are respawning multiple times a day on your field. So don't miss out on that chance. Another thing you should try to accumulate every day are recipe breads. So, between cooking delicious dishes, crafting useful accessories, brewing life-saving potions, and smithing powerful weapons, there are hundreds of recipes to learn in Rune Factory 5, so you better start learning them as early as possible. You will learn recipes by eating the different types of recipe breads, which you can all buy at the bakery, and you can also get additional cooking breads from their restaurant. Every bread you eat will let you learn a few recipes, if your associated skills are high enough. However, at the beginning of the game you'll only be able to buy two breads a day from the bakery and one from the restaurant, which is why it's recommended to make sure you buy them every day so you're not behind on your knowledge of recipes. You can also go to Studio Palmo to upgrade the bakery and the restaurant, increasing the limit of breads they will sell daily. Also, the first upgrade to the bakery will allow you to buy outfits from Yuki, so make sure you saved all of that lumber and stone from our previous tip and upgrade the bakery as soon as you can. Now that you got yourself busy farming and fighting all day, you're probably gonna find yourself low on HP and RP pretty frequently in the beginning. What a better way to give yourself a break by paying the traditional inn's bathhouse a visit, and that ideally once every single day. A soothing bath will not only replenish both HP and RP, we also get the chance to enjoy it entirely for free once a day as a new seat member and taking a bath will also raise your bathing skill every single time. The higher your bathing skill, the more it raises your HP, RP and strength. Just make sure to equip the seeds beginner mark that you're gonna receive early on through story progression before heading to the reception desk. With this beginner mark, you can enjoy all benefits of a free of charge bath up to character level 20. Still not getting enough of free benefits? Then try talking to the seat member NPC on the first floor of Rickbar's headquarters and ask them to support you. If you then throw yourself into battle, they will randomly save you from a stun or other status conditions or even completely heal you up if your health falls below 40% during combat. If you'd like even more help during combat or even if you don't, one thing you should always do is inviting villagers to join your party. Building relationships is important in this game, not only in order to get married, but also as it's necessary for some requests and to receive gifts on your birthday. One easy way to increase your friendships is by talking to everybody daily, using the greeting spell and giving presents, but by far the easiest way is to simply invite people to join your party. 
In Rune Factory 5 you can have up to 3 friends following you at all times and every hour spent with them will give you some friendship points. When talking with a character simply press L or R and you'll have the option to invite them to follow you and they should accept if your friendship is level 3 or higher or if you have the companion mark equipped. You can give your companions equipment if you'd like them to be a bit more useful in combat as by default they're not helping too much or you can also tell them to stop moving if they're getting in your way, especially while you're doing your farming, but either way it's good to have them around simply for the fact that it's strengthening your relationships. I guess it is safe to say that Rune Factory 5 probably doesn't pose too much of a challenge for most players even when it comes to playing in hard mode, but if you do end up feeling the need to change it up anyways then you can of course always ask at Eliza's counter to switch between easy, normal and hard mode. But did you know which aspects changing the difficulty level actually entails? While easy mode in other games like Story of Season changes up the whole game's market economy and an item's price or chipping value, and Rune Factory 5 all difficulty adjustments only apply to the combat aspects of the game. Among other factors, it determines how hard an enemy is to beat, how frequently monsters will choose to attack you at all, or how many of them will be spawning from a portal at a time. It even changes the amount of money that you will have to pay whenever you faint. So if battle is not your strong suit, like it's definitely not for me, then you might be pleased to hear that you can still just switch to easy mode, get farming to your heart's content without any limitations and enjoy your adventure without having to feel too threatened. No matter the difficulty level you're playing at, you'll be quite busy in Rune Factory 5, but luckily you can get some help from your monsters to do some of your farm work. If you have at least 3 friendship points with a monster and if you're not there yet, make sure to feed them and brush them every day and then you'll be able to ask them to work on your farm and they will water crops for you from 7am and from 3pm they will start harvesting. However, you may notice that after a few days of helping you, they will sometimes refuse to work and just stay inside their barn and that's because working depletes their health and once it reaches zero, they'll be too exhausted to work. You can simply wait it out for a few days and they will eventually get back to work, but if you heal them, they'll get to work right away. The easiest way to heal them is with a healing spell such as a cure, which you should be able to find in the ice caves, one of their earlier dungeons. And if you don't have that spell yet, you can give them any food or potion that replenishes HP. However, you won't be able to give it to them if their health is already at zero. So just keep an eye on your monsters and give them something to eat before that happens. Alright guys, so these are some of our tips for players just getting started in Rune Factory 5. I truly hope that these tips were useful to you. There is more Rune Factory 5 content on the way, so make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss out. And once again, thanks a lot to Cloudy for being part of this video and make sure to check out her channel as there's a lot of Rune Factory content on there as well. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.